All right, welcome to Beer Corner USA's Beers of the Week. I'm Chris Patini. I am Aaron Bush. And we are joined by the fine guys from Lucky Bucket Brewing Company. This is Chris Sun and Jason Payne. And we're going to bring in some Cask Beer 101. So a couple weeks ago, Chris uh, stopped by and had a great idea that we wanted to put some certified evil on our beer engine, some of our uh, rotating cask beers, if you will. And I thought, great, I've always wanted to try this beer a little different. And then Chris thought, let's do a beers of the week and let you guys know what cask beer is and why it is. So um, I guess without further ado, what do we say? We pour a little of the original? Yeah, we'll try the bottle version first and we'll see what the differences are that we can talk about the differences and uh, uh, see which one we prefer or don't prefer. I'm sure we're going to prefer both because we're both, I know certified's already good, so thank you. Now, what you guys are pouring there, I mean, uh, give us just kind of a quick background profile on this beer. What's the style, ABV on this thing? Uh, it falls into an Imperial Porter style. Um, it's nice, dark, roasty. I mean, it's uh, sweet, uh, chocolatey. Yeah, you get, you get all kinds of notes going on. Um, Imperial Porter, that means it's higher in alcohol, so it's 9.1 ABV. So uh, a couple of these will, will do you do you right throughout the night. Um, they'll, they'll treat you a little evil. They will. They will. They might. They're going to give you a, a lot of stories to tell the next day. But um, on the nose, or forget. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's an end of the night kind of beer, not to start your night beer. It depends on what that's, kind of night you want. This, a, this is a four that is the bottle cracker. Right <laughs> what, what time is it right now? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So on the nose, Lush. yeah, you get you get coffee notes, you get roasty notes, uh, like you said, dark chocolate, um, and then when you taste it. Uh, now I'm picking up some like oaky vanilla. Is this aged in some barrels as well? It is. It is barrel aged. Um, part of it is barrel aged, and uh, we blend in some barrel aged beer with a fresh certified evil, and that helps round it out, balance out the overall profile of the beer, and it gives it the nice balance that it has. So. I know it's a popular beer. I know whenever we have it on tap, it sells well. I know you can always buy a bottle of it in Crescent Moon. Um, it, it, it's it's very popular. I know it's a big hit for you guys. Yeah, we actually kind of have like a cult following. There's people around there who all yeah. they will do is drink Certified Evil. They love the name. They love the whole uh, profile of, of the, the, the flavor profile of the beer, and um, it's a nice lineup. It's a nice addition to our lineup. So yeah, great. Yeah, next door beer topic, and a lot of people coming from out of town that buy Certified Evil. It's great. Yeah, excellent. All right, the cask version. Yeah, the bunged version. The bunged version. So, what exactly is different in the brewing and fermenting to make this now to take certified evil or any other beer you guys would take off your normal fermenters and put in a cask and age it to then come out this way? Right, so the whole process is the same through the brewing process up through primary fermentation. And what happens <laughs> after that is uh, we actually rack the beer after primary wow. into a cask and we add some priming sugar and uh, spike it a little bit and uh, seal it up, let it sit warm. And what happens is it goes through a secondary fermentation process. In the cask. In the carbonate actual the cask. Beer. Carbonate the beer. And, and in today's bars and uh, in bottles, most people, um, artificially carbonate their beers. Or when you're you're serving beer at a tap box at a bar, that beer is pushed with a, a carbon, uh, a CO2 nitrogen blend, right? And that's so, like the gas you hooked up in the keg, exactly. you pull the handle, it's, it's pushing it out and up the tap. Pressurizing okay. the tank, pushing it up to those taps. So back in the day, uh, they didn't have those fancy systems. So what they did is they, they naturally carbonated the beer inside of the cask. And uh, the result is, um, a live ale. Yeah, a live ale. Real ale is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and so as you taste it, there's there's definitely wow. some major differences between the bottle version and I mean, the cask version. It's first thing, the aroma is different. It's almost I mean, a different beer. On this one, I get that. I can tell it's the oak. It's been in that barrel. Right. I can get that smell. And on this one, it's way softer. Uh, I don't get quite the I aroma. Don't, I don't get hardly, I, don't, I get a little bit of an aroma, but I don't get anything like this. But the flavor profile of this is much it, it's uh, extraordinary. It, it, it's much more roasty. Um, it's got a, a great creamy mouthfeel to it. And the reason for that is as you know, you got these big contraptions at the bar. Um, and the alcohol present. Yes, it, yeah. it is big. It is big. It is evil, more evil. It's not as covered up. 
So there's two main reasons. You got this thing, the beer engine. Right. Pumps the beer, beer out. You got a little thing called a sparkler on the yeah. end of the pour, and what that does is it agitates the beer. Fourth of yep. July. Yeah, exactly. And it <laughs> agitates that beer, and it uh, what happens is it releases uh, some of the gas, some of the CO2. So uh, the mouthfeel becomes smoother, creamier, that creamy mouthfeel that you were talking about, mm -hmm. um, and it really opens up the flavors because another part of it is it's served at cellar temperature. Right. Well, but I know for us when we deliver uh, or, or pour that beer. Um, our lines are kept all the way cold, all the way up to the faucet mm -hmm. with all CO2 push beer, but our cask beer, it's in the same cooler to start, but the line is not chilled all the way to that sparkler. Right. And so it is not warm by any means. No, no, not at all. But it is not as cold as a standard draft beer, allowing some flavor changes to come out of there. Right, yeah, us Americans have been brainwashed early on to, to enjoy our beer as cold as possible, but back in the day before refrigeration was easily accessible, um, cellar temperature was as cold as they can get it, which landed at about 55 degrees. So the, the resulting effect in what people are starting to appreciate nowadays is the fact that when you serve it a little bit warmer, it doesn't uh, shock your taste buds at that super cold uh, temperature. So it opens up the beer, and like you were talking about, Aaron, you know, those, those flavors, that roastiness and yeah. uh, the, the creaminess comes through so much more prevalent in the, in the Well, the, the lack of carbonation is, is um, it's not flat by any means, no. but, but the lack of carbonation, it, it, you don't have that carbonic acid bite. So it doesn't tickle the, the, the taste buds or numb the taste it's buds. It's not masking the flavor. Correct. Yeah. So, and at 55, you know, things taste different. This will taste different at 55, but this right now to me is, I like them both. This is preferred, but this is big. This is an amazing yes. difference this, between this, the two beers. Uh, 16 ounces of this will go a very long way. Yeah. And if you haven't had a chance to try the two, uh, I'm not sure how long your cask is going to last with us this time around, but hopefully this is something we can do many more times down the road so people can come in and, and, and get a bottle and compare the two and try the different things. Um, it is, it is, wow, this is really good. Thanks, guys, for... Way different, but really good. And yeah. there's a little more alcohol, which I can see on your face yeah. by your, yes. your actions. My cheeks are getting You're warm. You're feeling it a little it bit. Is. That's coming from that little extra fermentation going on sure. here. So from we went from 9.1 in the bottle. I don't know exactly where we landed. We need a hydrometer around here, but we might have a little more kick. So. I, thanks for coming in, guys. Yeah, thanks I for having us. Yeah, yeah, guys, thank delicious. you. Guys, make sure to check out our Facebook pages. Check out Lucky Bucket's Facebook page. They are very active. They've got all kinds of events from runs to concerts to, to just doing great Barbecue things with beer around town. Um, uh, your website is Lucky Bucket? Brewing.com. Brewing, not brewery. Lucky Bucket Brewing. Brewing.com. Ours is BeerCornerUSA.com. And uh, we got some more evil to drink. I uh, hope to see you guys around here soon drinking some of this with us. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Heaven, there is no beer. Oh, yeah. That's why we drink it here. Right here. And when we're gone from here, our friends.